Yeah. Hey. Come in. Hey, where can I put this? What is it? It's wrist, Jerry. The game of world conquest. <laughs> All right, that's perfect. Kramer, why do you have to? Hello, Newman. <laughs> Hello, Jerry. And hello, everyone. Today we're going to be talking about Risk, the game of global conquest. Risk has reigned as one of the most popular board games of all time since its release more than 60 years ago. I have many fond memories of playing Risk with my friends, battling over continents with dice and cards. The combat in the game is very mathematical, but surprisingly no one has ever said something exact about the probability of winning. There has been serious academic work in estimating it before, but to my knowledge, no one has found an exact formula for this probability. That is what I would like to introduce in this video. Before I do that, however, I need to explain the rules of the game. Risk's combat revolves around dice. When someone wants to attack a neighboring country, they announce to the person that they are attacking them. I am attacking you. Then this person, who is now defending, rolls a certain amount of defense die. If there is only one troop in the defending country, the defender rolls one dice. If there are two or more troops in the defending country, the defender rolls two dice. The attacker then rolls one less die than he has attackers. So if he has two troops attacking, he rolls one dice. If he has three troops attacking, he rolls two dice. And if he has four or more troops attacking, he rolls three dice. Then what happens after the rolls have been cast is you match the highest value rolled by each person and then compare. In this case, attack beats defense as five is greater than four. Similarly, attack also wins the second battle as uh, three is greater than two. If we had rolled a, if defense had rolled two fours, attack would win the first battle and defense would win the second battle. As a brief aside, defense also wins ties. So this is still one win for attack and one win for defense. Let's stick with this case. Attack won one, so what we do is we remove one defender and then defense won the other. So we remove one attacker. Similarly, we could have had a situation where we remove two attackers or we remove two defenders. The issue for players comes when you are trying to decide whether or not you should attack some well-defended country with your amount of attackers. Questions like how likely is it that my 40 attackers beat your 38 defenders frequently arise when playing the game. In this video, I will introduce a, to my knowledge, never before seen formula that gives a chance of winning if A attackers attacks B defenders. For this video, let's call the probability that A attackers beats B defenders TAB. To find a formula for TAB, we need to learn about recurrence relations. A recurrence relation is any time a function is defined in terms of itself at other inputs. To beat a mathematical dead horse, the Fibonacci numbers are an example of a recurrence relation. If you are a computer science student, the Fibonacci numbers are likely one of the first things you learn to program. You may have been taught that you get the Fibonacci numbers by starting with 0 and 1, and then you add the last two terms in the sequence together to get the next one. This can be written as a recurrence relation. If we call the nth Fibonacci number fn, we write that fn is fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2, and f0 is not, and f1 is 1. Notice that we need to know the previous n minus first and n minus second Fibonacci term to compute the nth using this relation. Something a computer science student may not have been taught is that the nth Fibonacci number can be arrived at directly. By using a mathematical tool called the generating function, one can arrive at this very odd looking formula for the nth Fibonacci number. It is surprising that this formula even returns an integer with all the root fives around. However, it does indeed give the nth Fibonacci number, no matter how strange it looks. Notice that the main advantage of this function is that we don't need to compute the previous n minus first Fibonacci numbers to get the nth. We can just get at the nth directly. My approach to exactly solving risk combat is completely analogous to this process. 
We first arrive at a recurrence relation for the probability of A attackers winning against B defenders. We then construct a generating function for the recurrence, and then use this generating function to solve the recurrence exactly. First, we need a recurrence relationship for the probability of A attackers beating B defenders. The risk recurrence is summarized in this table. We won't go over exactly how to arrive at this recurrence relation, but I will point out some key features of this set of equations. The first thing to note is that this recurrence is in two variables instead of the single variable n we saw in the Fibonacci example. These two variables are the number of attackers A and the number of defenders B. The next thing to note is that there are many different rules depending on which values you are trying to calculate. To read this table, first find which domain the values you care about fall into, and then apply the rule found to the right. Let's make sense of this table. First, look at the third row. This row says that if we have two or more attackers attacking zero defenders, then the probability of winning is 1, or 100%. This should make sense, as there are no defenders left. Similarly, the first and second row say that if we have zero or one attackers, we have a 0% chance of winning if we attack, as we cannot attack. Now let's focus on the last row. This row says that we have at least four attackers attacking at least two defenders, we follow this rule. We can see the removal of two defenders in the TA B-2 term, with the corresponding chance that that happens, that being 2,890 over 7,776 along with the terms for removing one attacker and one defender, and the term for removing two attackers. Rows 4, 5, and 6 are edge cases for when we do not have the maximum number of attack die or the maximum number of defense die. To solve the recurrence, we construct a generating function which encodes all of the rules of the recurrence into one function. This calculation is difficult for such a complicated relation, but in case you're curious, this is the generating function. Here, t, x, y is the generating function, and p and q are component functions that make up t. We then arrive at the coefficient for this generating function to get our formula for t, a, b. This is also an involved process that I will spare you, the viewer, from. Instead, let's see the thing itself. Okay, so here's the actual formula. On the left, we see the term t, a, b, except for aesthetic reasons, it's shifted up by 2 for the attack, so it's t a plus 2 b. On the right, we see a hilariously ugly block of math. If we take a look at this right-hand side, we will see that there are five component functions, t1, t2, t3, t4, and t5, that make up the definition of t. Let's define these functions. First, let's look at t1. t1 is the heart of this formula as t2 through t5 are also defined in terms of t1. So t1 is also very ugly. It gets worse. Here are the next four functions. Remember that every t1 we see in these equations was this, and every t1, t2, etc. was one of the five functions I just showed you in the overall expression. Though this ridiculous set of equations does give the exact probability of winning combat and risk, it is so unwieldy that it's essentially useless. The recurrence relation shown in the previous section is actually much more useful in computing the probabilities than the exact formula on a computer. However, I'm still happy that the formula has finally been written out, regardless of how ugly it is. To summarize, in this video I introduced a novel formula for the probability of winning a battle and risk. I then showed at a high level the path to arrive at such a calculation. I'd like to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like or a comment, and have a nice day. Thanks for having me over, guys. Yeah. <laughs>